The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 27th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't dial in, you can send me an email. Send that off early and send that to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside your tires den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a mixed bag. We take a look at what's going on in the U.S. indices. Uh, you got the Dow off 62, then Russell's down 9. New York Stock Exchange is off 65. But the S&P is up 12. The Nasdaq's up 165. The semis are up 47. Trendy's up 29. Gold is off 5 bucks, with silver being flat. Lights Read Crude is up 77 cents. Natural Gas is up 6 pennies. The 30 Treasury back 13. Ticks trade out at 109.15. Leading the charge to the upside, it is Chipotle up 133 bucks that's a seven percent move decker's outdoor a 20 percent move 97 bucks for biome european acquisition 124 percent move that's 22 bucks we got some movers out there mercado Libre base up uh, just a mere 1.7 percent for it that would be about 20 dollars and app folio is up 19 bucks that's a 10 percent move there the shakers to the downside kinsale Capital Group, 69 buckaroonies, 16%. Chart Industries down 21 bucks, uh, $29, 21%. Sia, the freight company, off 24 bucks, 6%. Charter Communications down 25, 6%. Biorad Laboratories, 6.5%, a $19 move there. Let's start with. Let's start with let's start with what's going on from a daily perspective out here. So from a daily perspective, let's switch over to my white background charts. We'll be there momentarily. We'll start by taking a look at the daily equity future contracts. We've got the ES Mini upper left hand side. What do we know about it? As long as price closes below the close of bar number five, it's going to confirm a TD nine count bottom pattern. Now that bottom might not form until Monday. The low can form on the bar following bar number nine. If we take a look at that, what else is out here? You've got wave number seven. That needs a higher low. If price does not tick below, yesterday's low, 41.46.25. So far, we've been down only 41.49. That will confirm a wave number seven bottom. And then finally, if there's a bullish reversal candle that were to form by day's end, you would have a Roadsman Dominicator bottom. Now, does having three bottoms better than two, better than one? Not that I've been able to experience out there. Uh, but you do what, what the market is telling us, at least with regard to the technical indicators, is the ES Mini and the S&P 500 is absolutely trying to put in some type of bottom. Now, that bottom could just lead to a two to three to four day rally or it could be something of more significance. In the case of the NQ, the NQ is going to confirm a TD9 count bottom pattern today. That is as long as price closes below bar number five. Bar number five's close inside the NQ is up at the 14,712 area. If we were to see a bullish reversal candle at day's end, then we would get a buy the D point pattern as well. If we take a look at the Dow, the Dow does not have a bottoming pattern yet. 
uh, uh, or any kind of confirmation. It does have, in fact, it negated its buy the D point pattern yesterday. Price is moving lower, doing less relative energy out there. And those are the types of bottoms, really, the roads meant to indicator bottom. Those are the types that you really like to see get confirmed out there because, they, you know, picture this picture being in a pool, taking that uh, ball, you know, stepping on it, you know, putting it on your feet, trying to push down. You can only hold on to it for so long before what happens? Pops out of the water. Well, that's an X and what the roads meant to indicator signals to the top and to the bottom do out here. So what's needed inside the Dow is a bullish reversal candle, and that would confirm that pattern. It's only in day number seven or bar number seven of a TD9 count. So the earliest we'd see a bottom there would be between Monday and Wednesday of next week. And the Russell 2000, it completed a TD9 count bottom pattern two days ago. And if price closed below that low, that low, by the way, the close of that bar was 1660.90. We're trading below that as we speak right now. If we close below that, that pattern gets negated out there, and then that would have to make us say, hmm, something to think about. Likewise, if, in fact, by day zen, that pattern holds, we've got to say, hmm, something to think about. What's most important with regard to the Russell 2000, and this is probably – potentially a key to the market decision here, whether the market's getting ready to move higher or not, would be if we can get that Russell 2000 to close above that red oscillator and change line, currently printed at 1675.30, that would go a long way to saying, okay, we're getting ready for at least a short-term change in trend out there. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the equity future contracts. If we go take a look at the indices out here, and let's go do that, we'll go, give me a moment here, that's something else gonna pop up on the screen, but we'll get to the indices momentarily. Uh, cash indices, that is. Let's take a look. Where does Stevie have those? They should be right here. Okay. So now in the... What the heck? Okay. In the upper left-hand corner, you've got the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the cash indice. You see basically the same type of pattern here. You see a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. This needs a bullish reversal candle. Right now it says it's a hammer candle, but we don't know what that's going to be at day zen. But if it did generate some type of bullish reversal candle, that would confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. That would tell us that price should at least get up to 33025 If we take a look at the S&P 500, much like the ES Mini, wave number seven yesterday, Bar number eight yesterday, TD9 count likely to form today, complete on Monday. The NDX 100, the same pattern out there, likely to complete, uh, confirm today, complete on Monday. The Russell 2000 cash indice out there, in order to maintain its, uh, its uh, TD9 count bottom, price must close above 1651.40. Now, what happens if it doesn't? Well, if it doesn't, it gets negated, loses its bottom signal, but it still has that Rosemont indicator pattern that's out there. And so what that would then require would be a bullish reversal candle to confirm that bottom. If we look at the semis out here, they already completed their TD9 count bottom yesterday. As long as price is not closed below yesterday's low, yesterday's low for the semiconductor index was 3173.55. As long as that does not take place, we should see price move up to 3301. That is its red oscillator and change line. The transports also completed a TD9 count bottom pattern yesterday. Price should rally up towards 14,128. We take a look at the NASDAQ composite, just like the NDX 100, should complete or should con uh, should confirm a TD9 count bottom today, should complete that pattern on Monday. And lastly, the New York Stock Exchange. It is in bar number eight, has a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal triggered. That needs a bullish reversal candle. But you should get a TD9 count bottom between today and Tuesday of next week out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We've got a couple questions that have come in. One from Scott in Colorado Springs. Question is the implications of the ES negating its weekly Gartley buy pattern. And Mary Jo wants to take a look at, she knows gold's moving higher. And her question is, will the equities follow? And then John wants to take a look at late sweet crude. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive. He just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, uh, folks. So the low for the day is very much likely in inside the NQ out here. And earlier this morning in the uh, den, I posted uh, this set of charts here was the 10 minute charts. And in essence, I think what I said was it may be that the uh, clue as to whether the markets are going to continue their rally today or not may just be simply coming from the 10 minute time frame chart. And the reason is, is because each of them, well, not each of them, the ES, the NQ and the Russell 2000, each rallied right up into their TD9 count breakdown resistance levels. Let me pull this thing down here just a little bit. Inside the ES Mini, it's 4178.25. That's the level to be watching today. If we get uh, uh, at least two consecutive closes above that level on a 30-minute basis, although I can't guarantee it, I pretty much guarantee that the market's going to rally into the uh, close today. If we take a look at the Russell 2000, that number to be looking at is 1689.50, and inside the Dow will be 32.925. Now, we don't have synergy just yet. We only have the NQ that is breaking out above those levels out there and it really needs the others to participate but the nq can do and right now is doing all the heavy lifting out there watch those other numbers out there those td9 count breakdown resistance levels if price is able to close above that odds favor that we continue a rally into the uh, i don't know i'm not saying that we're not going to solve in the last 15 or 20 minutes or something like that but it does look like we would rally going into the uh, close out there another thing that you and i can do is, is where's the dax trading right now does anybody know? We probably should pay attention to that. Now, I believe the DAX is close to 1130. Eh, I should know that off the top of my head. But what we want to see, let's see, is the DAX, uh, the DAX is trading lower. So that's not giving us a great indication, just simply because of the directional correlation that exists between the DAX and the NQ out there. But still, the DAX is still open uh, for a bit. So take a look at uh, it. Um, I know I'm not showing you that on my uh, charts right here right now. So let's do this. Uh, let's uh, let's go first with there's really two questions that have come in dealing with sort of the same types of things. So Scott in Colorado Springs yesterday asked the question on the ES Mini, if it negates its Gartley buy pattern, what are those implications? So what he's referring to here is the bottom chart here, a weekly time frame. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just simply expand this out. 
And what we can see here, so every A to B equals CD pattern, whether it's in this to the downside, the way that I do it, the way that I believe that everybody should do it, is the way that those patterns get confirmed is with a bullish reversal candle. So you need to learn those, but it's very simple. You can only you only really need to learn seven of those candles. Once you learn those seven, you have the exact opposite, the bearish reversal candles out there. And here we can see that the ES mini made more than a one to one, A to B equals CD. It formed a bullish hammer candle. Let me get my uh, cursor out here. It formed that uh, bullish amber candle the week of October 6th. Now, that low is an important low out there, and that's at 42.35.50. And as Scott was basically saying, if price closed below that, what are the implications out here? So the first implication would be that if price closed below it, but it's still above 41.94.75, and that's a key area of potential support. That is where price had broken out from. So I would say that today, the more important level to be watching is 41.94.75. Does price close below that level? If it does, Scott, what that tells us, and I can go over to another chart out here and take a look at the uh, our, my other system. We can do the A to B equals CD patterns to give you price projections, and, and I'll do that. I'm just not going to do that at this second. Now, what I've got up here on this uh, on this uh, set of charts here is I've got the, basically the three primary instruments that you and I could look at to determine what the S&P 500 is doing. We just looked at the ES Mini. Now, we already covered the ES Mini for the daily time frame. Next to that, we've got the cash indices, and the next to that, we've got the SPY. So and we really want to go ahead, Scott, and put both of all three of these really together because what you and I are always searching for, it wasn't your real question, what are the implications of the pattern gets negated, where's the next support level? I really think that's what the question was because that's what we would be looking for. Right, we're always trying to identify. First thing we're trying to identify on any chart is where is support and resistance. On my charts that we take a look at, we've got two tools for that. Really, we've got three tools. We've got... Uh, well, we've got the, uh, the, the, the two prime, well, the three tools would be the market profiles. Anybody can get access to that information out there. So that's one way. The oscillator and change line, shoot, that's a fairly easy thing to program on your system out there. And I give you the uh, the, the directions on, in essence, how to do that, what that uh, tool is all about. And then you've got the TD9 count breakout and breakdown resistance levels. Those are the three things that are going to provide us information as to where the buyers and sellers reside. Surely there's other things out there, but for our show here that we do, those are the things that we focus on. So back to that, um, in the case of the S&P 500, what we see out here, Scott, is on its weekly chart, it did not complete a Gartley buy pattern. It was only the bullish reversal candle that took place on the ES Mini out here. Now, the great question would be, do they all three have to be in agreement? And the answer to that is no, they do not. One can simply, one can trigger the rest of, of the uh, move to either to the upside or the downside. But still here with regard to the S&P 500 in the cash indice, whereas the ES mini could close below breakout support in order at 41.94.75, the weekly chart for the cash indice would need to close below 41.03.98 before we would say it's curtains. No, I'm not, I'm just kidding on the curtains piece of it. If we take a look at the S&P 500, this via the SPY on a weekly basis, it did generate a bullish reversal candle. It was a bullish engulfing. Its key level of support is 409.88. So what are the implications? The implications are that when a bottoming pattern fails, you got to find the next bottoming pattern and you want to be able to identify uh, where the support area is. So let's switch over to my other set of charts out here. And let's take a look at those A to B equals CD patterns out here so I can provide you, Scott, uh, with uh, with price projection. Before I switch panels, though, there was a question that came in from uh, John. And John was saying he had heard me say before in the past that bear markets – will not start unless there is a Rhodes Momentum indicator top. And John, you said on the weekly time frame, uh, uh, let me clear that up. It can be the daily, the weekly, or the monthly time frame. It does not have to be just the weekly time frame. So when those signals are present, we most certainly want to take a look at those. With regard to the ES Mini, for its daily time frame out there, it was a Rhodes Momentum indicator signal at the top. From a weekly standpoint, we take a look at the ES, the S&P 500 for its daily time frame. It was a Rhodes Mint Indicator top. We did not have those tops on the weekly time frame. So that top is in place. Now, how did I come up with that? I, I, I assume we're watching. Uh, we make sure we're still on those charts. Yeah, we are. Okay, good. So we're still on those charts. And how did I come up with that? I really came up with that. I, I was, I'll tell you how I came up with it. 
I had done a tremendous amount of research on every celestial aspect that I that was inside the uh, New American fe Ephemeris. I digitized that, so I've got 300 years worth of data. Um, some going back 200 years, and some going back, and then going forward another 100 years or so. And uh, and I was looking for a consistent signal that identified tops and bottoms, whether it was Mercury retrograde, you know, whatever it was out there. I did discover one thing that was consistent, which was apogee and perigee. But what it led me to was identifying this pattern. And this pattern, that Rosemont indicator signal, was present for every bear market that started inside the Dow going back to 1896. Every single one of them. It was present either for a daily, a weekly, or a monthly time frame. And so that's where that comes from, uh, John. Now, does that mean that every Rosemont indicator signal creates a bear market? Absolutely not. That's not what it means. It means when it's present, though, you should really be careful. So we get back to this break. Let's go take a look at the A to B equals CD price projection levels. Try to finish answering Scott's question out there. I think I've covered your question, John. But if not, let me know, and we'll we'll answer that question. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. We're still looking at my white background screen. I went and switched over to the continuous contract here just simply so that I could take a look and see if there were any other CD9 count breakout levels that we would be looking at next. And the answer there is no. This old one out here, 3932, that already has been, uh, in essence, uh, utilized out here. So so the next areas that I'd be looking at before we go take a look at the A to B equals CD levels, uh, Scott, I'd be looking at the swing points. So that swing point right out here from March of 17, that's anywhere between the range of uh, 39. 32 and 4102 and then I move in a price moves below that swing point that would be this next swing point out here from October 14th so that would be that first implication now let's move from this set of charts here over to the black background because we also want to take a look at the A to B equals CD patterns so in a moment we'll see the black background you'll see the weekly time frame chart for the ES mini out here and uh, and this is actually the December contract which is great because now I can give you real price levels to watch so we can see that it closed below this hammer candle. It's the week of uh, that began October the uh, 2nd. That would negate that buy the D point uh, uh, pattern out there, the Gartley buy pattern. And right now, the next price target area is the 1 to 1.618 A to B equals CD level. And that's at 41.32. Now, we've already been down to a low of 41.46, but that would be the next area. Now, be, what we would be looking for here for a bottom on a weekly time frame chart would be another bullish reversal candle or some other pattern out there. And I don't believe there was any other pattern. Well, this is gonna be bar number, week num bar number six. So you're looking at uh, two to four more weeks out there uh, before that type of pattern could uh, form on a weekly basis. So it would be these A to B equal CDs. Below that would be 40, 22, 50. Now, let me give you those levels for the uh, SPY. Uh, and the S actually, let me do it for the S&P 500 first. So SPX, I think. And let's get the uh, weekly out here. And that A to B equals CD pattern is going to look like this. Now, remember, inside the cash indice, it has not broken through. It has not broken through. Um, it's a, a TD9 count breakout level. That was at 4103, if I, my recollection is correct. 4101 happens to be the 1 to 1.618 area. So watch for that area inside the cash indice to be a strong level of support. If price closes below that, well, then the next price target area becomes 39.97. And again, on a weekly basis, the S&P cash indice would need to generate a bullish reversal candle. Let's finish it off for Scott by take a look at the spies out here, and really for everybody else. So as we take a look at the A to B equals CDP, pattern here for the SPY. Um, that's going to give us a price projection of, drum roll Johnny, uh, that's also near its 1.618 level, 410.91, and it was 409.88, that was the breakout level for the uh, for the SPY out there. So let's call it the 409.88 level, that's going to be real key. Now, pulling back to a breakout level can be a bottom. Doesn't necessarily have to have a TD9 code, doesn't have to have a Gartley buy, doesn't have to have a wave number seven out there. So it can be a bottom, and it's worth noting. Of course, if it's going to be a bottom, you're going to see intraday charts like 10 minute, 30 minute, 60 minute, and so forth uh, give you confirmed bottoming signals with price moving above uh, resistance levels out there. So, uh, Scott. I hope that uh, helped answer your question. And, uh, John, you said that did answer your question as well. So thank you very much for those requests out there. Let's go to our next request, which is from Mary Jo. And Mary Jo is asking the question, good question. Uh, it's uh, basically, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. It says, gold has been moving higher. In essence, will the equities follow? So that's a great question. So first, let's take a look at gold, silver, and the mining equities. And the way we're looking at the mining equities here, Mary Jo, is via the GDX. So I don't know if it's a specific individual mining equity, or I think it did have it plural. So I think it was the GDX, in essence, that you're referring to. So here's what we first know. Well, one, we know that uh, gold bottomed on October the uh, 4th out there. That's when it completed that TD nine count bottom pattern. With regard to silver, let me get my cursor out here. It also bottomed with a TD9 count. Uh, now, this confirmed a TD9 count pattern. It, it really did bottom with it on the 5th of October, the 4th of October the 4th of October as well. It didn't really complete that pattern until the 6th, but still it was the 4th. And the TD9 count for the GDX also on the 4th. So that's an important thing, and that's important to note because that says we've had 16 trading sessions since the lows in the mining equities inside of gold and inside of silver out there. So let's remember that because we're going to go back and we're going to see what that actually means. Because here we can see now we've got tops in each of these. Well, we, we you don't see the charts? Stevie, Stevie, Stevie. Thank you, Rye. Thank you very much for being my wingman. Thank you. Let's go back here. 
So here, if we take a look at these, sorry for the little bit of the repeat. No, thank you for letting me know that uh, you're, you were paying attention. Stevie was not. October 4th is the date that is synonymous synonymous with regard to bottoms forming for gold, silver, and the GDX. 16 trading sessions ago. Now, each of these on a daily basis, well, not each of them. Gold has got a TD9 count top. And that says that price has to close above that high, that high being 2,920, for price to continue moving to the upside to tell us that it's breaking out and getting ready to rally further. Right now, what we have is price trading with inside its profile levels. Resistance there, uh, Mary Jo, 1996, and support at 191980. is also support at 1962.10. That's its green oscillator and change line. On the daily time frame for the ES Mini, consolidating with inside its profile. It's tested, in essence, the bottom and the top, so it's a real consolidation out here. It uh, does not have a top pattern. What it's waiting for is for gold to be on its merry way, or at least for price to break out above 23.30. And finally, the GDX, it completed a TD9 count top. It completed that pattern on October 19th. Price, uh, what, it, the, what the GDX actually needs out here is a bullish reversal candle, and that'll confirm a Gartley buy pattern. But Mary Jo's question was, Gold's been moving higher, but the when will the equities follow? So for that, we're going to go back to my black background screen out here. And this is the key out here. The key was everything bottom October 4th. And so what we want to really take a look at is what are the rates of change? And that's what this chart here or this set of data is going to provide for us. So up at the top, we've got gold. Below that, we've got the GDX. In fact, let me just put up the silver contract as well, uh, Z23. It'll fill that data in. Now, here, the most important thing to be paying attention to, Mary Jo, is what is referred to as the rate of change. That is column number three out there. And this has taken us back, those 16 trading sessions. So gold bottom, and since then, it's got an 8.6% rate of change. Well, the GDX bottom back then, it's got an 8.5%. So the mining equities have been following. We know about the directional correlation. The mining equities have been following along. That's why I question in my mind, maybe it was a specific mining equity that you were looking at, and that would be different than the general complex out here. And if we take a look at silver, silver is up by 8.7% as well. So they've all done a similar rate of change. Is that good news or bad news for the mining sector? That's bad news. That's it's kind of indicating to you and I that we could anticipate a move lower inside of gold, silver, and the GDX, more than what we've seen so far with those tops in place out there. What do I mean? I mean, folks, do this on your own. Do the research. I'm giving you the clues here. Do this on your own and find out what I'm about to share with you, and that is this. Go back and find another bottom, significant bottom, significant rallies, and find that bottom inside of gold, and find that same bottom inside of the GDX, and look at the rates of change. As you Go figure out where it moved up to before it topped out and figure out how many trading days were there. What you're going to find out when gold is really rallying, the mining equities are going to have substantially larger rates of change, like three to one, four to one. Meaning right now, if this, I'm not saying the move's not real. This move is emotional versus real, real out there. So that's, uh, but the mining equities, Mary Jo, they've been moving in concert with gold and silver. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's get we got a couple callers on the line. Let's get to uh, them. The first is uh, Sue in uh, Bethesda, Maryland. Thank Sue, you. thanks for holding so much and thanks for calling. How can I help you today? And how Thank are you, you today? Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, can you help me again? Is the SOM that the one that I asked you before? Yes. I'm still keeping it. SOM, Exxon. S -S -O -M. Yep, 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 yep. Exxon Mobil. Yep. Okay, so uh, so you're still in it, and it still has a bottoming pattern. It's the day of, so the day that you really want to watch out here is October the 11th. <clears throat> October the 11th is both a daily swing point. Volume there on that trading day was 57 million. You've done 10 million today. You're pulling back into it. That says it maybe does 30 million. So what ExxonMobil is doing is pulling into a prior swing point with lighter volume. No. It has not tested that uh, bottom. And a real rejection would be either testing that low or closing above that swing points high. The low is at 104.83. And if it tests the low, gets down there, you want to see it close back above that. That would be a true rejection. Maybe. Another rejection would be a close above 107.17 today on lighter volume. So those would be the two things. If you're watching this on Tiger TV, you can see two different trend lines. One to the downside, that's the yellow one. One to the upside, that is the green one. So price is also at a trend line level of support out there on the daily time frame. If price were to close below that low, that low from October 11th, that would then trigger an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. Now, typically, in order to – typically – you're looking, uh, you're asked, trying to ask the question, is it passing that B point with volume? If we were to close below today, at least at this stage of the game, we'd have to say the answer is no. Does it mean that it won't fulfill that A to B equals CD to the downside? It doesn't mean that either. But if it does pass it with volume, what it does do is it adds the evidence of a further move lower. Now, if price were to close below 104.83, then your next downside price projection level would be at 98.09. Again, I'm not saying that's what it's going to do right now because you still have that swing point price is trading into with lighter volume. That's also a TD9 count bottom. That was bar number eight there. So that's really the level to be watching inside of ExxonMobil. And again, if we get a close below 104.83, uh, I've got two areas where I would tell you price would head to. The first is that 98.09. That's that one-to-one -one A to B equals CD price projection on the daily time frame. The second level that I would use would be 100.16. 
And since you have been in ExxonMobil for so long, and since it has been basically consolidating sideways ever since it really broke out back in October of 2022, what I would do is I wouldn't close out that trade now unless it closed below 100.16. And 100.16 happens to be the bottom of its monthly profile. This may be right. that you are just simply in right. a consolidation, Sue. Uh, go ahead. One. Okay, 10116. One, watching one, that level. 10016. 10016. Oh, one, zero, one, yeah. 10016. One, yeah. But right now, should, uh, should I uh, not, don't add anything on it or... Just wait to see uh, the, the, the support level 104.83 first. Yeah. And that's that's Correct. a great question too. Yeah, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be adding to it uh, just yet because right now what you and I are looking at is will support levels hold? And, and I know that I don't know the answer to that. We're at support levels. We've at least been able to identify those, both trend line support, a TD9 count, and a swing point. So we've done our analysis there. But is that time for you to add to this position? You know, if we were in a winning winning position, I'd be more inclined to do that. I don't want you to add just yet because we don't have what I would call a clear bottom. What we have is price testing support, and so far it's holding. Okay? Okay. Uh, okay. That's, a, that's, one, a, that's my suggestion. Look at 104 at and, and 100. Yes. That's a bottom. Okay. Okay. I'll really be sure that. How do how do uh, uh, oil market doing? Right. Oil market. Yeah. So the oil the market. Oil. Yeah. Good. Good question there. Then, so the the oil market is is doing pretty well, but it's also in kind of a sideways consolidation, which is trading between support and resistance. And the only way that oh. um, the only way that so oil, where we'd have bad news from oil, would be a close below seventy eight fifty one. Right now, price is likely not to get down there, but it could. But right now, it's got a strong support area between 81.43 and 83.88. That's the real strong support level. If that fails, meaning it closed below 81.43, we're going to likely see 78.51. And if we get a close below 78.51, that's telling us that uh, light sweet crude is forming an A to, or has formed an A to B equal CD to the downside. So it's just kind of oh. traveling sideways, sort of like Exxon Mobil. Uh, but uh, I like the setup on Light Street Crew better than the Exxon Mobil trade right now. But right now, uh, don't add, just hold, and uh, let's. Uh, I'm going to say a prayer for you that support holds. Okay, thanks so much, Steve. You, you bet. You're you so bet. wonderful. Thanks so much. You bet. Thanks you for bet. everything. Thanks. My, my pleasure. That was Sue in Bethesda, Maryland. Ray in Sarasota has also been holding a long time. Ray, thanks so much for doing that. How are you today? Doing well. Doing well. Excellent. Got a question Excellent. on uh, NAT, Nordic American Tankers. Okay. Tell and me what you're doing, how I can help. Uh, get your opinion on where it's going. Uh, it's cleared all its highs uh, going all the way back into uh, June of 2020 at this point. Yeah, so where's it going? Uh, you know the answer to that, right? It's going to 868. And you're at 474 hmm. right now. How's that sound? Sounds pretty good. Okay. Well, I'll tell you how I came up with that. Right now, what we see here, and I'm just looking at the black background chart, so I'm still on those screens here, but I'll, I'll just interpret it. And that is that on this month, the month of uh, March of 2023, that was a TD9 count top. When you get a top, price pulls back to support. Well, the support level that this pulled back to was the top of the monthly profile, and that held. And that's a very bullish signal out there. Now, if on the 31st, I know that's the end of October, but is that a trading day? I think that it is. If at the end of the month, Nordic American Tankers closes above 465 and you're 475 right now, that's going to tell us that price wants to get back to its TD9 count breakdown level on the monthly time frame. That's over time. It doesn't happen overnight. And that level is 868. I know you don't see it on my charts right now, but that level is 868. If we look at a weekly time frame chart for Nordic American Tankers, let me pull this back just a tad. Um, yeah, I mean, there's large A to B equals CD to the upside out here that will probably give us something similar. So if we take a look at that pattern, the large one, we start down at the lows. Looks like it maybe was January of 2022. We come all the way up to this high out here in March of 2023. The retracement low was on the week of uh, May 1st of 2023. And that one-to-one -one price objective gets us to the 651 level. So it helped, you know, it's in that one to 1.272, 739. Now, the swing point that it's dealing with on a monthly basis, 
uh, Ray had 20 million shares. You're at 19.6 today. So you're going to get a confirmed A to B equals CD so long as price closes above that 465 level. That was the weekly chart that we were looking at. That's also the same swing point high for the monthly time frame. And on a daily um, a chart, I don't see any kind of a, a topping signal. So Nordic American tankers, it's on fire. I don't, this doesn't mean that it won't pull back or anything. Those pullbacks, in fact, the... Uh, the the 130 minute time frame chart there are 330 minute bars in a day's trading out here and it as we speak right now is completing a td9 count top and that says that ray by about 11 well about right now you could start seeing nordic american takers pull back and it could pull back to the 456 level now i know we're going to break if you have another question on this feel free to hold if not have a fantastic weekend all righty you bet. Thanks, Steve. You bet. You bet. That's Ray in Sarasota. We'll be right back, folks. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, let's try to cruise through a few requests out here. With regard to the semiconductor index, oh, do we have another caller? Well, hold on a minute here. We do have another caller. It's Robert in Kansas. Robert, uh, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? 
Yeah, I'm doing great, Steve. Thanks for taking my call. I'll make it my quick pleasure. because I know you have a limited amount of time. I do. Can so, you take a, a yep. look at XLRE and yes. XRT and just kind of give me the thumbs up or a thumbs down for a long trade? And keep in mind, I'm an active investor. I don't do day trading, so I look at usually a day, um, a day or a weekly chart. Sure. So the XLRE, the real estate sector, did form a Rosemontum indicator bottom yesterday. What you'd really like to see here, though, is a close above the center of its bullish structured profile. And right now I've got a trading below it. The, you'd like to see a close above 3289. You don't want to see a close okay. below 3263. If you get a close below 3263, it's going to go retarget and test that swing point from October 25th. The volume there was 8.4 million shares today. You've done 3.7. So price is starting to move lower. But you do have a successful bottom inside of the XLRE on the daily time frame. Your next level of resistance, the upside would be 33.67. With regard to XRT, the retail uh, ETF sector in the S&P 500, it's going to take a moment for these charts to populate. Um, we'll try to hang on here. Uh, the music is going to start playing in about 10 seconds, but we'll, they'll keep that music low for a little bit. So with regard to the XRT, the XRT is just trading in a sideways consolidation. Right now, your support area is 58.12 and resistance is 59.33. If you ask me which of the two charts do I like better, I'd have to say it would be the XLRE based upon its signals as we speak right now. Robert, thanks so much. Uh, give me a call back on Monday. We can take a look at these in further detail if you'd like. And thanks for calling. And you have a fantastic weekend. Everybody else out there, you do the same. Have a fab fabulous Friday, fantastic weekend. I'll see you on Marvelous Monday. Take care and thanks for joining us today, folks.